Today's Wednesday, January 4th, 2017, and you're tuned into the Elevator Radio Show. Hey, everybody, happy new year to you. Stay tuned, got a good show for you today. You're tuned into the Elevator Radio Show, a weekly program dedicated to covering news and information on elevators, escalators, and moving walkways. Produced in the wee hours of the morning, a new show is uploaded every Wednesday, sometimes even before you get out of bed. Listen to some of the comments sent in from our audience. Rob from New York writes, Tom, are you f***ing insane? You actually get up at 2 a.m. each Wednesday to put this show out? Man, you must love elevators. Tim from Illinois writes, I'm not sure why I listen, but ever since I tuned into the first show back in 2007, I've been addicted. Matt in Texas writes, I like your safety messages, Tom. It's important to remember them each and every day. And he also adds, When am I going to win the monthly prize pack giveaway? Ron from California sent this in. Despite your inability to pronounce words in the English language, I tune in each week and am glad that you offer this service to the industry. It's better than Google News Alerts. Sarah from Washington writes, Love the show, Tom, and look forward to it each week. I'm glad I signed up for the newsletter. You provide a valuable resource for the industry, not only for North America, but worldwide. Enjoy the show. And now, here's your sleep-deprived host, Tom Seibert. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It is good to be there here today. Be there, be here today. Today is uh, the 4th of January, 2017. It's our first show of 2017. And, you know, how many of you out there get like this when you get, have a, um, like a day off or a couple days off? We're really, we only have Monday off because uh, observance of uh, New Year's. But when you have a day off, doesn't it throw the rest of your schedule completely off? At least that's that's what happens to me. Um, man, Monday, I thought it was Sunday. Sunday, I thought it was Saturday. I guess that's par for the course. But uh, And then those shorter weeks, like this four-day week, literally, I, I feel as if we cram five days worth of work into it, which is uh, definitely tough. But I hope everybody had a nice New Year's. I was not able to stay up. I was beat. I just not had, didn't, hadn't been sleeping very well. Uh, and my wife, we were watching the movies in bed, and she she turned to me and goes, "You're not falling asleep, are you?" And I just closed my eyes. I'm like, "No, no, I'm not falling asleep." And then I think by 9:30 I was out. So she st- she stayed awake. I did not sleep. I did not make it to New Year's in New York or Chicago. Probably somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. I probably made New Year's, but that's about it. Um, and uh, and that's fine. I, you know, to me, kind of overrated to some extent, but that's that's just my own personal opinion. So, yeah, I hope everybody uh, had had a chance to kind of relax this weekend a little bit. Uh, obviously, the mechanics out there that may have been on uh, call, obviously, you probably weren't uh, resting too much. But, man, as we swing into 2017, I'm optimistic it's going to be a, a good year for uh, for the world. I think uh, um, we'll see what happens, and uh, hopefully... You know, the goals you set up for 2017 are ones that you reach, and uh, 2017 becomes a year that um, uh, that you achieve whatever you need or want to, to achieve. And that's my personal personal note to you out there. Uh, hey, I want to thank Bob uh, Krieger. Bob, thanks for writing in or commenting on the Facebook page during uh, last week's program. We were talking about an escalator that started going in reverse that was out of service, and, uh, and I believe it may have injured some people. I don't recall. And, and I kind of put that note out there and said, hey, you know, this has been a topic of, uh, of discussion in the past. At least I've had it with, with uh, some members of uh, uh, facilities management types at large government institutions that have, have kind of uh, fought to make this happen in terms of uh, blocking off escalators that are not not functioning, and and uh, Bob was absolutely correct. He had a huge, uh, uh, a nice long post cited regarding, uh, you know, escalators that are not in use should be barricaded off, and that is uh, that's on the Facebook page. So as always, uh, check that out. And Bob, thank you for for commenting on that. Greatly appreciate that. And that's where a lot of the information that comes uh, corrected on the program comes from all of you out there. So I greatly appreciate that. So thanks for, for doing that and happy new year to you. So anyway, we got a good show for you today, kind of mixed up with all sorts of uh, interesting tidbits and whatnot. And uh, so should have you out here in no time in our uh, regular like 30 minute format or whatnot. And uh, as always, thank you for tuning into the show, practice safety and uh, 
Uh, up next, we'll get right into the news. Let this week's news stories give you a lift on what's happening in the vertical transportation arena. Each news segment is organically dug and fresh with news stories of the week. Got lift? If not, stay tuned. One of the depressing facts that I realized coming back to work on Tuesday and, you know, updating all the system information, the county system, all that 2017 quote book, stuff like that, was the fact that we do not have another day off or vacation day or pay time, payday off, I should say, until the end of May. Doesn't that stink? Shouldn't there be a holiday in there somewhere? I know that, um, actually, I don't know if, uh, I don't think the mechanics get Martin Luther King Day off, but if you're in the school system, you're getting a whole bunch of stuff off. So anyway, uh, yeah, it's kind of depressing. And then July and then uh, Labor Day and then ah, shit, 4th of July. Uh, what else is up there in the in the arena of days off? Then Thanksgiving, Veterans Day for the mechanics, technicians out there. And I think that's about it. So mm, sums up the holiday schedule pretty much in a nutshell. All right, first news article of the story. Just as a reminder that if you have a loved one or, you know, who may be older and may not be as steady on their feet, please, please let them know that they should not be on escalators because they can cause certain certain types of issues, whether they be balance issues or whatnot. But a nine-year-old man falls on 2nd Avenue subway uh, escalator. I got to tell you, when I ride an escalator, I actually feel a little bit, you know, uneasy. I'm just not quite... Uh, you know, use the velocitation or I don't know. I know that's not a word. Velocitation, velocitation, velocity, velocity, velocity. I don't know of an escalator moving and getting off and on. I know I, I, I feel that more on the moving walkway um, than anything where you st- where you step off and you start walking. But uh, he's going to be OK, but just kind of scary. You know, 92 year, year old people should not be. Um, I don't think should be riding escalators if they are unstable on their feet. And, and if you, like I said, if you got a loved one, a grandfather, a father, uh, who may also be unstable, please share with them that they shouldn't be riding, um, you know, escalators. Uh, please, 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 please. Because obviously things, much worse things can happen when somebody falls on an escalator, uh, and they're wearing, whether it's a scarf or whatever, uh, a young woman or an older woman or a woman in general was uh, strangled to death after uh, uh, what apparently seemed as if she had fallen in and her, car, her scarf got caught uh, at the end. And this was not recently, but it was just a story worthy of uh, just mentioning uh, relating to the importance of it. Okay, people were rescued in a Gold Coast elevator uh, after they were uh, stalled in it for about three hours, and this is in Chicago. And if you have been listening to the wonderful uh, press that the city of Chicago has been receiving uh, regarding uh, the number of killings and murders. Yeah, this is uh, kind of un, un, uh, unbelievable on so many levels. Um, and mainly what you're seeing is a lot of gang activity where uh, gangs are shooting at other gangs and uh, you got police officers in some cases not really wanting to put themselves out there. A whole bunch of uh, issues and you know, it's one of those deals where it's it's ugly. It's really ugly. I, I, am I worried about walking around in the city of Chicago? I'm not. These are happening in, in areas that are, are not the best parts of Chicago. Uh, but still, you know, the city of Chicago has not reached its its highest murder rate in the last, uh, you know, in the last year. But they definitely still have an issue that uh, Mayor Rahm Emanuel is never going to, is not going to be able to, truly get away from um until that number goes down and for those of you out there you know the those in those communities who demand that something happen i think unfortunately it's going to require that uh, you take it into your own hands and I, I i don't know exactly what i'm referring to in that but i'm just saying you got to take your neighborhoods back and uh and do your best to kick the the riffraff out that's uh, causing these terrible tragedies uh, from occurring because nine times out of ten you're going to find little ones, little kids uh, caught up in in that kind of gang activity, and that those are the ones that make the headlines, not necessarily gangbangers that uh, that get shot. So it's the innocent bystanders that are that are just uh, are are not doing anything. Okay, CRIEnglish.com news has an article talking about a new regulation to improve elevator and escalator safety. Um, just kind of points out, this is probably the first article I've read that talks about uh, a government agency 
uh, commenting on these kinds of accidents, which I thought was pretty interesting. So uh, they're trying to minimize that. And obviously with the increased uh, development and, and um, the number of elevators has increased, they are noting that there has been some shoddy maintenance, uh, which has led to some of those uh, incidents. But uh, China is, is, is definitely... Uh, definitely growing um, as they have been, even as their economy slows. Um, hopefully, they can do uh, some good with with this, with focusing on safety. China.org.ca, another article talking about the escalator policy being abandoned due to safety, and this is the policy where um, stand right, walk left. And I, I can't imagine that they actually had this as a policy, but the reason why they are they are trying to get people not to uh, to do this is because um, steps in the general public, as they note in this article, is about 15 centimeters high. Escalator steps are 21, which pose a higher risk of stumbling, So, which makes perfect sense. Uh, and it's just kind of shocking that they would even come up with this type of um, policy to begin with. But it seems to have caught on in other parts of the world and yeah just stand on the damn escalator and enjoy the ride how about that just enjoy it what's the rush are you really going to get to you know your your ticket you know well to security in the airport that much quicker if you walk or or, or run up an escalator or down one you know just just take your time enjoy the ride maybe that should be a bumper sticker or a t-shirt i don't know relax enjoy the ride a mom of teen who fell down elevator shaft in abandoned hospital sues the city. Gotham is uh, reporting, and this is uh, obviously a huge tragedy. Um, do I agree with uh, a lawsuit like this where uh, a building that was abandoned uh, was, you know... The issue here, obviously, is that whether or not proper steps were made to ensure that the general public could not get into the building, regardless of uh, warning signs, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, the reality is after the, uh, the, the accident had occurred, um, the building started to be demolished. So, you know, it's, if, if the lawsuit can, if a lawsuit like this can prevent other accidents from occurring I'm all for it but unfortunately unfortunately what happens in these situations is that the city settles the mom gets money and nothing really changes because the insurance company pays or whoever you know deals if it's self-insured for the city uh, they cover it and that's done you know I mean the attorneys get tons of money the mom's going to get a portion. The reality is, is her son um, is still no longer with us. And if there are other buildings across in that area, they may or may not have anything changed um, that would affect another accident from occurring. So I think in another country, you'd probably find that most people would say, well, you know what? Somebody fell down an elevator shaft. They, sh they were where they shouldn't have been, and common sense might have uh, prevailed. So, uh, well, it, it, I'd love to, to kind of see the uh, progress of this um, the suit, although I don't think that we will. Uh, but still, it's unfortunate on so many levels. Okay, New York, the New Yorker, has a cool I didn't know that they um, they put together an Amazon original type program which is kind of cool if you uh, if you check it out it's it's on Amazon Prime and how many of you out there are binge um, like TV show watchers I am totally one of those people I've become one I never thought I would but whether it's Game of Thrones or the Traveler or uh, West something there's so many of them out there that it has really changed and revolutionized how TV is actually watched. You know, you don't have to wait anymore. you got to wait a year for the next season to come out, but that's about it. Uh, but The New Yorker uh, has a, a series. This one is talking about elevators, which I think is pretty darn cool. It's a five-minute section. I, wanna, I, I have a link to the actual video if you can't tune into it. Um, 
but it's pretty cool. It's talking about uh, you know elevators in, in general, how they changed the uh, the world and the landscape, and and what an important invention, what an important uh, thing it is, a mechanical you know machine it is, and kind of gave me goosebumps. So enjoy this. I thought this was pretty darn cool, and uh, I'll let everybody watch that uh, at their own own pace, but I encourage you to check it out. Definitely check it out. Very cool. Okay. And yeah, so and I, I'll have to check out some of the other series that they have. The video for the link above is, is in there. Let me see if it'll blare into your eyeballs. Uh, no, that's a commercial for a car. <laughs> so anyway, I'll let everybody check that out on their own so you don't uh, have to watch a, or listen to an ad. Okay, this is terrible. How many of you out there are dog owners? Um, I was a dog owner at one point until our, we had to put her put her put her puppy down, unfortunately, a few years ago, and not a fun thing to do whatsoever. But oh, who takes their dog in an escalator? Oh, I, you know. How much signage do we need? I mean, obviously, you don't see too many dogs that uh, uh, in airports. But, man, just think about it. Escalator steps have little slots and stuff. Don't take your dog on an escalator. If you're, if you're taking your dog on an elevator, make sure you're holding it or it's close to you. You do not want the dog to run out of an elevator on a leash that you're holding. Oh, so, please, do not take dogs on escalators. Don't do it. This is, should be common sense, but so many people just don't don't think before they do stuff like this, and they're not meant for dogs. They're not meant for dogs. Please remember. Okay. The next news article was a kind of a blog post from the StraightTimes.com in Singapore, or referring to Singapore, talking about um, escalators and accidents and incidents and um, basically at the Building and Construction Authority. And I believe Singapore, I could be wrong, talks about the incidents that have occurred uh, have been attributed to user behavior. We all kind of knew that, right? I mean, the reality of escalators going rogue or, or being, uh, you know, going crazy is, is really rare. It doesn't happen that often. Not to say it doesn't have happen, but it does. So uh, they are going forward to raise awareness through posters on safety and escalators. I think that's a good idea. Obviously, anytime you're talking safety, it's, uh, it's, it's good to, uh, to promote it. So yeah, it's not common sense. It should be, but it's not. So remember that. Okay, 44 school children caught up in a hor horrific escalator crush. I don't have a video on this. Oh, there's a video on this, but I'm sure there's an ad that's going to play on this. This is in Russia. So um, it looks as if they were traveling... Let's see here, 9 to 10 years old, falling over one another at the bottom of a moving stairway. They had been on a school trip in a cinema and were returning home. Lucky nobody was killed. Um, man, press the stop button, you know? If they could. I don't know what exactly what was going on. But yeah, watch the video, and I'm sure you're going to be just, yeah. It's coming from the mirror.co.uk. But yeah, apparently five were uh, seriously injured, crushed. Scary, I'm telling you. Next news article: Embarrassment of broken escalators. Okay, <laughs> the La Las Vegas Review Journal has a has a reader from somebody. Some reader wrote in saying, "I'm embarrassed that in Las Vegas there are so many broken escalators." Oh man, so glad you wrote about this. I'm so glad. What's your name? Oh, Deborah. Deborah Earl. All right. Oh, no, that's not her. I'm sorry. Jim Boone. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Paul Grasswicks. All right, here we go. Yeah. Glad you wrote in. Glad you're, you're embarrassed about uh, major tourist attractions being tarnished by the multiple broken escalators along the strip served tourists and local pedestrians. Oh, man. Ugh. Now that is some riveting stuff to comment on and share, isn't it? Yeah. Man, glad they posted that. Maybe somebody will do something about it because I'm embarrassed. I'm really embarrassed. 
Okay, historic wooden escalators in Sydney. This is a, a cool Elevator World unplugged. Uh, it's not an unplugged blog uh, post. I'm sorry. This is a web exclusive uh, written by Lee Freeland. And it is a uh, kind of a recap about uh, escalators that are wooden in Sydney, Australia, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Good article. Link is in the show notes. Next news article. <laughs> I feel like, what's his name? Oh, and that's the end of the story, or whatever that guy's name is. Um, you know what I'm talking about. I can't think of his name. I need more coffee or sleep. It's probably sleep. Anyway, okay. Uh, seniors held prisoner by broken elevator. Obviously, this uh, does we see about four or five articles like this in the uh, course of a year. Um, I don't want to get your daily thing here. Shut that thing off. Okay, DNA Info uh, has an article, Seniors Held Prisoner by Broken Elevator Urge Landlord to Rush Repairs. Obviously, rushing repairs is always the key. I don't think there's any company out there that wants to sit on a job, make it long, last any longer than it should, or not deliver equipment as quickly as they possibly can, no matter what the lead time is. So, um, yeah, it's not easy so but i would not want to be a prisoner in anything whether it be a jail cell or my apartment or home so yeah it sucks i mean remember you're thinking about yourself in in long-term care or whatever move to a ranch something you don't have to go up and down uh stairs okay a big contingent of investigators um is going to a group of 25 inspectors engineers attorneys and videographers is scheduled to examine a luzerne county prison elevator wednesday to document evidence of for potential future litigation involving two deaths officials say prisoners the prison's fifth floor elevator door immediately gave way at the base july 18th when inmate timothy darnell gilliam jr 27 fell backward and hit the elevator door at the facility on Water Street, Wilkes-Barre, uh, pulling 25-year-old prison correction officer with them, a criminal investigation concluded. That's a lot of people. How much money do you think all of these people are being paid? I don't think the inspectors necessarily are, uh, you know, that's a big, that's a lot of inspectors. Oh, no, a group of 25. I'm assuming that includes inspectors, engineers, attorneys. Okay. I bet the attorneys are making lots of money. Um... Yeah, they both died. They're terrible. Um, so I think what you're gonna find is, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna find. You all know you all know what you're gonna find, basically. You know, I mean, or somebody who else is somebody gonna find? I mean, this should, it should not take this long to figure out why uh, why the doors open, right? Right. Anyway, okay. But reality is, is that. Um, uh, at what point does somebody just say, okay, two guys are fighting. We went through the elevator doors, got thrown into each other. The force of that, obviously, will be determined. Um, but um, anyway, anyway, we'll see what happens. I'm surprised it actually made uh, mainstream news. Okay, next news article, LehighValleyLive.com. Lafayette wants more state aid for huge outdoor elevator. Lafayette College has proposed the East Skyway, an outdoor elevator leading up to an observation deck and covered bridge to replace an old set of stairs as a means to get up and down East Easton's College Hill. Elevator would likely to, would likely, wait, the elevator would likely, the elevator would likely to up near the spot, a club for students. What the hell does that mean? The elevator would likely I don't feel so bad about not being able to speak the English language because this person can't write it. More state aid to build an elevator to go up a hill so it's closer to a bar? Where are the stairs? Just use the stairs. Students are, I mean, for accessibility, obviously, but come on, use the stairs. Provide a, provide a free taxi service. Seems like a huge waste to me, but what do I know? What do I know? Next news article. Not quite. Oh, you know why this came into the world of uh, elevators is because elevators was mentioned in it. Uh, ClaimsJournal.com 
apparently a terrible accident where, where a mom was killed when she fell off a ski lift in a Colorado ski resort. Her two daughters were also injured after falling about 20 feet, uh, but were okay. Um, what concerned me is if you read down through the article, and I'm a snowboarder, so I I've, I've, haven't done it in a while, but I know what, um, you know, it's like to get on a ski lift, you know. It says, chairlift deaths are rare both in Colorado and across the country. People are five times more likely to die in an elevator accident and eight times more likely to die in a car accident. Where the hell, is, where the hell that, does that number come from? Since when was, were, are people more likely to die in an elevator accident compared to a car accident? Is that, where, where does that stat come from? Okay, and I agree, chairlift deaths are probably rare, but I would say that the safety devices that uh, keep people safe on a chairlift are probably not as prominent as in an elevator or in a car. But how many people die in a, you know, general, now we're talking general public here, we're not talking elevator mechanics, um, die in, uh, in that. I'm going to have to comment on this because, trust me, I, I, I just don't understand. I don't understand where that comes from. Okay, five times more likely. It's, but five and eight are pretty close. I, I just don't, I, that seems crazy to me. Seems crazy to me. Anyway, but still, terrible accident. So be careful if you're a skier or whatnot out there. I know we got some skiers in our in our midst, so uh, so be careful. Last news article, saving the best for last. Risha Hendrick has got a great uh, editorial piece in Elevator World, and she shared it online, January 2017 Editor's Overview, and I think it's great. If you want to check out Elevator World's uh, um, SoundCloud uh, re-podcast, uh, check that out. Just click on the orange button there, and you can and uh, you can hear it. So pretty neat. So it's it's kind of a nice uh, perspective. The title of it is Inspiration versus Perspiration. So uh, it's good to have both of those. So um, yeah, it's exciting. It's neat to see so many new innovative systems out there, and looking forward to to seeing the 2017 Project of the Year award. And I deleted that link for some reason. I don't know why. I think I had it in there twice. I apologize. So. There's actually a link further in that uh, editorial piece there. So thanks, Risha, for, for sharing that. And that's pretty much going to do it for the show, everybody. Sorry for the, the lack of uh, energy this morning. I do feel like I've got it, but I'm tired, I, I must admit. Um, Tuesday was a busy day. Yesterday, I was beat. And uh, we've got some projects uh, going on where it required a lot of physical effort. And... Between that and trying to get caught up after a full day in, you know, on the production floor, it's just been, it's just been a busy, busy, long bunch of days. I've, I literally collapse at, at nine o'clock and tonight will be no different from that. So, um, but anyway, happy new year. I do want to wish that upon you all. And, uh, and as always, you know, remember safety, remember your family, remember the reason why you need to go home each and every day. People count on you. People love you. People want you to be home with them. Uh, no matter who's screaming at you to get the job done quicker, um, just hang on. Hang on and, and know that it can wait a little bit because nobody is going, it's not open heart surgery that we're doing here. It's it's obviously you know important, but at the same time, not worthy of having a heart attack over by any means. So uh, so write those, write those goals down for 2017. That'll... That'll help you get to those goals and reach them. And uh, we'll go from there. So everybody have a great rest of the week. Be safe out there. Stay warm because the cold front's coming through. And uh, and we'll talk to you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.